I should have done okay, this. You're ready to go. Okay, yes. <clears throat> the appointed hour, five o'clock PM, having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter and chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. I call this meeting to order, and it's obvious that we are meeting via Zoom. Um, we will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the mem items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record. Lindsay Schnarr. Yes. Jan Marquard. Yes. Erica Zikos. Yes. Okay, and Tom Long uh, is not here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, Planner and Staff Liaison to the Design Review Board and Christine Rest Restra, Planning Director. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October of 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board, applicable land use board, and building commissioner. And so tonight's agenda is DRBFY21 wayfinding sign system under section 3.20 of the zoning bylaw at various businesses, uh, BL zoning district and TCDR district within 100 feet of the town common. So this is what we're going to do. It's going to Amherst College is going to present us with their new signage plan. And do we have the applicant here? We do. We, okay. um, yep. So, so um, t uh, Tom, Andrew, Seth, and Samuel um, are all representatives okay. of uh, Amherst Very College. Good. And so uh, perhaps we can let them introduce themselves sure. and sure. give a, a, a presentation outlining the the project as a whole, and then focusing on the specific signs proposed within the DRB jurisdiction, which is uh, the DR district, which includes the general business zoning district and the abutting limited business, um, as well as the TCDR district, which is uh, land within 150 feet of the Amher of the town common. So, take it away. So, who's going to start? Um, um, I can do a, a brief uh, intro. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, being able to meet with us. And I know schedules are crazy. So uh, it's no small feat that we're all here on the same screen together um, in, I'm sure, different, different towns and even states. Uh, but um, so my name is Tom Davies. I'm the director of design and construction at Amherst College. And um, we have with us uh, Seth uh, Wilschutz, who is one of the project managers uh, at Amherst College. 
and our um, uh, sign developer slash graphic arts folks um, from Roll Baresi, uh, Andrew Baresi, and Sam Peace. So um, we will kind of collectively uh, lead you through, really, we're going to ask Roll Baresi to, to lead us through a, a presentation to uh, orient you and then focus the conversation on the um, specific signs that are, because it's a, it's a small subset of the overall um, sign <laughs> system, of course, that, that um, is, falls within the purview of this body. Um, but I, I wanted to give a, a brief intro just to the, the kind of the zeitgeist of this thing. Um, and, and I'm sure many people have been to many other colleges, even in the Valley, you know, whether it's Smith or even UMass. And, you know, there's a campus signage system so that um, folks know where to go and how to get around and new visitors or, you know, people who are considering applying um, know how to get around and where to find the admission center and all those types of things. And Amherst College really has, has, has kind of um, not embraced that uh, until now. And, um, and it really, it comes from a place of the college leadership um, saying, hey, you know, we're all about welcoming and inclusion and, um, you know, reaching out to all types of people everywhere on the planet. And we do that in every way, except when they get to our campus, they can't find anything. So you know, let's make this a friendlier place. Let's people let let's let, let people who are you know on Amherst Common understand that Amherst College is is right there, and in fact, it kind of surrounds them at that point. You know, right? So um, it's really about um, creating that that sense of welcome and um, inclusion. So uh, that's my kind of brief, you know, sixty thousand foot kind of perspective. Um, and um, I'll stop talking at, at, uh, about that at this point. I'm happy to answer questions or whatever. But I think that, um, uh, Chris, were you going to give a, an intro for the group um, So I, before we jump into our presentation? Catherine, oh. would you permit me to speak? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to give some sort of a context here. Amherst College is um, coming to us with a very um, wonderful, I think, wonderful science system. It's very cohesive and it really works well for them on their campus. And they're also reaching out to us to um, locate some of the signs on the town right of way. Um, and the town council has jurisdiction over the town right of way. So, um, and they're also uh, suggesting some signs on the town common. And town council, of course, has jurisdiction over the town common. Um, there was a historical commission meeting last night where the uh, historical commission commented on um, and made recommendations about signs on the town common because the historical commission has a special um, relationship or special responsibility to uh, sort of guard the historical um, significance of the town common. So they came forth with some very uh, good um, comments and suggestions. And now um, you're being asked to review this sign system and make recommendations to, actually, I guess I could say three bodies. Um, one is the planning board and the planning board will be reviewing um, the signs that are proposed for private property within um, the area that uh, Amherst College is um, suggesting the signs go. So you're going to be asked, asked to uh, make recommendations about the signs that are in your area of jurisdiction to the planning board. And you'll also be asked to make um, recommendations about signs that are in the, the right of way or on the town common to the town council. So um, those are the areas that you're going to be focusing on. And uh, thank you very much for okay. um, agreeing to undertake this review. And we're looking forward to hearing your comments. Could I ask, are we uh, privy to what the, the historical uh, commission uh, recommended? Or so we just work on our own, from our own perspective, or would it be helpful to, and maybe Jan can weigh in there, should we uh, be considering uh, what was discussed last night? Just not to, so we don't fall over ourselves with all kinds of recommendations. So what, what, What's the thinking on this? Uh, uh, 
Jan, Jan did you want to respond uh, about that? I mean, I, I would just say, uh, you know, Jan can certainly, um, or Chris Breshrup could certainly uh, yeah. inform the board of what were the recommendations from last night's historical commission. Um, and you can use that information as you discuss amongst yourselves um, for uh, for your review. I think it's yeah. most appropriate for Jan to give those recommendations since she's yeah. on the historical commission. Well, it kind of, um, to put it briefly, is, is straightforward. Although we talked for, I don't know, <laughs> two hours or something. It's mostly concerns the proliferation of signs and the redundancy of signs between the town and the college. And so um, there's already been uh, a meeting and there will be more between the two entities. And we just um, specified very specific locations where we felt that uh, one or another entity needed to remove their or not put up their sign and okay. include directions. That was primarily what it was. We weren't looking at it as a design issue as this body is, but more how it responds to the general look of the town and the common. Okay. And I just want I just wanted to say that I'm blanking myself out because I heard the entire presentation last night and I have a zillion things to do that are overdue for a new job. So I'm here and I'm listening, but I'm turning off my screen because I'm also doing a ton of stuff. So I hope that doesn't seem offensive to anybody. Okay, thank you. That'll, that's all. All right, then why don't we, why don't you all just continue and we can pick up later. Okay. I think Sam is going to share his screen, right, Sam? Yep. Hang on for just a second. And we've already started, just as a brief uh, interlude before Sam starts, we've already started to incorporate some of the feedback received from the Historical Commission meeting um, yesterday. And so we're going to kind of show you um, some updates as we go through about how we plan to, to address some of their concerns. Right. And also, um, as Seth mentioned, um, uh, we've had that meeting, uh, and Jan had mentioned we had had that meeting with the town planning staff. So some of that messaging um, that was in the initial program that uh, we had uh, submitted um, is starting. Is that those modifications are starting to uh, appear in the in the updated uh, in the updated set? So. Um, uh, I just wanted to kind of give the design review board uh, an over uh, overarching. Um, kind of view of the major sign components in our system. Um, we're looking at primary gateways, secondary gateways, uh, trailblazers, there's, there's only a few of those, um, and most of them are now no longer located within the downtown area. Um, the vehicular directionals, both large and small, so the larger vehicular directionals are located along the periphery of campus, and those are going to be the ones that we're primarily focusing on with the design review board um, to get their uh, approval um, and recommendation on uh, around the town green. Um, there is one small vehicular directional that we're going to be looking uh, looking at. Uh, a series of building identifications so that we can identify these locations uh, and these public buildings, public facing buildings to visitors um, and to uh, folks that are uh, attending events, um, as well as clarifying parking lots and parking requirements um, for both uh, the larger surface lots and also secondary um, residential lots. There's a series of freestanding cultural banners. Again, most of these are located within the campus uh, proper. Um, Tri-sided kiosks, we have one of these. Actually, we have, yeah, we have one of these that we're asking the design review, review board to look at. Uh, Double-sided kiosks, tabletop maps um, to try and keep these maps so that they're not blocking views. The tabletop map uh, in particular um, is being used primarily within the campus um, so that uh, as you're up walking through the campus, you're not blocking views, uh, especially off of first year, uh, first year quad out to the Holyoke um, mountain range. Um, and then pedestrian directionals, which would uh, also be located through the, throughout the interior of the campus, uh, really to kind of reinforce directions to these public venues as uh, visitors and uh, prospective students are walking through campus. 
Um, our graphic standards um, come from Amherst College Visual Identity Toolkit, um, which is a document that regulates the color and communication for the Amherst brand. Um, so our colors are really derived from their uh, this, this toolkit, um, as well as our typography and, and our symbology. Um, so the colors that you're seeing here are the colors that we're looking at for um, our sign system, uh, and those, those directly relate to this toolkit, uh, both their primary color, uh, color palette that you can see here, um, as well as their secondary color palette. We're also looking at what are required uh, for breakaway and public safety uh, for signage located along um, major uh, vehicular routes uh, and uh, public uh, and public way that uh, would require a breakaway. Um, we're also looking at um, opportunities where those breakaways aren't needed as a direct burial um, for the base for these signs. So um, looking at our location and zoning district overlay, um, we have... Sam, if you could uh, back up to the beginning of the um, kit of parts for just a second. I just want to mention sure. a couple of things about the design, because um, yep. I'm sure the design review board would, would be interested in our thinking behind some of these design decisions we've made. Sure. We're also really glad to hear from the Historic Commission last night that they felt the overall design of the program was very appropriate and sort of had an approach of doing no harm. So they really felt, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, uh, that the signage didn't have a negative impact on the common uh, and, and felt very much um, uh, consistent with the identity of, of the town as well. So we were really happy to hear that, but generally, um, we're using a uh, granite for things like the gateway components and the bases of maps and kiosks that is consistent with the granite uh, you would see on Amherst College's campus. Um, and, uh, and in fact, we're, in some cases, we're using granite they have stockpiled from previous projects as well. So there's a nice consistency of material that runs through. All of our posts that you're seeing are of a charcoal gray tone. And the sign panels have a very dark, almost black uh, coloration to them, still in, in the sort of purple family, but very dark, so that the signage recedes in the landscape and doesn't jump out at you too strongly um, against the landscape. But the information on those backgrounds is bright uh, and white and so very legible. So we want legible information uh, with signage that tends to recede. Um, in, in many cases, we're, we're, we're using single posts with elevated sign panels so that you're seeing through them into the landscape and streetscape beyond, and we're not providing any obstructions to your views, which is important to us. And we're trying to keep the scale of these elements down as much as possible and um, attaching them to the posts with a very light um, sort of black iron kind of bracket to again, lighten the design uh, as much as possible. So, you know, that, that's kind of the thinking behind the design um, and the material choices that we've made. Um, and uh, we think it's, uh, it, it, it will look very appropriate and nice, not only on campus, but along the perimeter of campus throughout the town. So, sorry to interrupt, Sam. No, thank you, Andrew. Um, so, um, Really, our locations and zoning district overlay um, take a, as this, this group probably knows, Amherst campus is quite expansive. Um, it takes a whole series of zoning plan kind of blow-ins in order to, for us to, to kind of address everything. But in the order to um, really kind of help narrow this group down, um, we really focused in um, and you can see it here lately, this light blue line um, is what we're asking the design review board for their, for their feedback on. Um, and you'll see that as we go into um, the, the, um, the plants closer, closer in. So um, in zoning plan five, uh, we had originally uh, had requested 
um, a one of those trailblazer signs, uh, which is A3.001. In our subsequent uh, meetings with the town planning office, as well as the uh, historic commission, uh, we have uh, removed that sign and we're going to relocate that um, and coordinate with uh, the town sign uh, at location number four. Um, really, this was just a sign kind of pointing to the left, um, allowing folks coming down Main Street um, to understand that in order to get to Amherst College, you take a left and, and go down and go south on South Pleasant. Uh, so with that uh, being incorporated into the town sign four, we've removed that redundancy, um, we've, we've removed the extra sign and um, really kind of, uh, uh, kind of streamlined the, the messaging that happens um, at this location. Um, so the other ones that we're really looking at is uh, C-104, which is a building identification at 79 South Pleasant. Uh, F-102, which is a tri-sided kiosk, again, also at South Pleasant. Um, we've located this there, uh, this particular kiosk there, um, due to uh, the really the high amount of uh, attendance that go over to the HR um, department, which is located at 79 South Pleasant. Um, a few large vehicular directionals, B-104. Um, B103, again, um, based off of our conversations with the uh, planning department and uh, historical commission last night, we've actually relocated this sign. We've pulled it further. We've moved it across Boltwood Ave. Um, so we would not be conflicting with the town's welcome sign uh, or the town, uh, the town directional sign number nine. Um, the town, our town gateway, um, which is a downtown gateway, which is A101. Um, as well as a, another large vehicular directional that happens, B106. Um, the town has uh, relocated their town, um, the town sign, number 10, and pulled that further south on South Pleasant. So again, we would have enough space in between these signs to not be in, you know, not be in conflict and, and reduce sign clutter. Um, the parking identification that happens uh, here at Converse, uh, commerce lot, a tabletop map kiosk that we had kind of showed the initial renderings of, um, of just located outside of Converse Hall, and a building identification also at Converse Hall. Lastly, uh, A202, which is a secondary gateway um, that happens at Quadrangle Drive, and a small vehicular directional that happens as you uh, proceed up Quadrangle Drive, um, just before you can make that turn, that left turn onto Boltwood. So what we would like to do is actually go through each one of these signs, show you what they are, what they look like, uh, a rendering of each one um, that we have, um, and uh, kind of get your feedback on on each one as we as we go through. If that would if that would be uh, helpful. Could I ask? Do you have? Are you going to be able to show us um, the location? This map is really confusing. I mean, are we yeah. going to? See? Yeah. Okay. Not just the sign, but exactly where it is in Amherst, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we have we have actual physical uh, actual renderings, photographic renderings of each one of the locations. So you'll be All able right. to see the, yeah. the surrounding. Okay. So um, let's start uh, at the top. Um, uh, and may I just interrupt you for one moment? Um, of course, I Marie. believe er uh, Erica Zikos has raised her hand. Thanks, Maureen. Um, I was just wondering where there is a close proximity to a planned town wayfinding sign. Maureen, do you have the town's uh, updated proposal handy so that we could see what content is intending to be included? Yes, absolutely. I, I do have a copy of the town's wayfinding system. Um, and um, so at any point, if, if members want uh, to refer back to that, we certainly can. Okay, Maureen, we've also incorporated those town those town messages um, mm -hmm. in partnership with our um, with our vehicular directional elevations. So that mm -hmm. way we can compare messaging uh, that initial messaging that we've that we've started to um, kind of work back and forth with with the with the planning department on. Perfect. Um, so. Um, 
Really, we don't have anything in our first plan um, since we've removed the A301. Um, so the F102, um, so that's the tri that's our tri-sided kiosk. Um, Samuel, um, just uh, yep. could you uh, go back to the map and really um, get uh, or uh, orient the the members of exactly the sign that you're about to show the the plan, the sign sure. plan for. Yep. So the 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 three particular plans that we're looking at is are this one here. And then the two that we're really focusing on in are, are this one here. This is uh, College and South Pleasant. Uh, and then the third one, it happens here. Um, again, Boltwood Avenue are green. And South Pleasant goes here. And this is Quadrangle Drive. Okay, and so when you talk about each sign, um, specifically, I believe you have a map um, that's zoomed in. Uh, yep. If you could just give members uh, sort of landmarks of, you know, what corner, what street that's on, maybe what building is it next to, just um, so everyone has a clear understanding. Of course. So I'm actually going to skip ahead rather than going to the select sign messaging and, and just really kind of focus in to start with uh, the renderings. Um, so that way the, the group can kind of understand exactly what we're talking about. So um, our primary gateway, this is located right on the corner of Route 116, South Pleasant and uh, College. Um, this is on the, if you're coming down towards the, if you're coming down towards the green and uh, um, you know, kind of the greens in front of you, uh, this is that on that right hand corner. Um, this would be a granite base with an aluminum sign cabinet. Maximum height on this is four feet. Um, and that's mostly because of the, the way that the grade falls, falls off. Uh, we have an aubergine sign band with the dimensional white lettering. Um, again, that granite base. Um, that granite base uh, extends up the hill um, to form a seat wall. Um, that ranges between 16 inches and 18 inches. Um, and then the grade falls below um, as it goes off. We've, we did this in uh, a particular uh, reason of kind of maintaining an openness um, to these signs, um, not build it, trying to build a large wall um, and really trying to preserve those views into the green. Is there a sign there now? There is not. <laughs> I've been on that corner maybe a million times. I've been, okay, so this there, is the first well, time. You're, yeah. the, the, the signs that you would have seen there are the temporary ones that, that um, not this summer, but every other oh, summer we would have camps. Um, yeah. Yeah, summer yeah. camp okay. and summer yeah. seminars and whatnot all, right. all located there to send people this way or that way or sure. whatever. Yeah. Uh, but no, there's no permanent signage there. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay. Um, um, we uh, just one other note on that. Uh, we should mention that um, folks probably are aware that that the Mass Department of, of Transportation is, is redoing Northampton Road. In fact, we uh, we understand that they are starting literally this week with you know preparation work, um, but. Um, we um, caught wind of that, and uh, to make this sign really work well, we um, we really wanted to improve the pavement of the sidewalk there in front of it. And then we found out, okay, well, the DOT was going to redo it anyway, and they were amenable to um, modifying their design to make it, um, I, I will say, a little more graceful and a little bit more um, thoughtfully designed. Um, it cost a little bit more money and the college is picking up the tab for that. Um, so um, that actually is in process. Of course, the, the mass DOT project is intended, they, they say it's gonna take three years. So uh, at some point that, that work, work will be done. Um, but just to mention that as well, it's, it's really more about the, the sidewalk and the, the, the way that the curve works to the, to the sidewalk to kind of accommodate the, um, um, you know, the corner there. They, they would have done it kind of in, in segments of, of 
uh, you know, trapezoidal shapes of concrete. Um, so uh, anyway, just so the, the so the uh, the board is aware of that as well. Thanks, Tom. Sure. Um, so moving on, um, A202. This is at the corner of South Pleasant and Quadrangle Drive. This is our secondary gateway. Um, this is perpendicular uh, to uh, South Pleasant uh, and parallel with uh, Quadrangle. Um, this would be a, as Andrew mentioned, a charcoal gray post with the wrought iron look, feel of the uh, bracket uh, and the dark arborine panel uh, and dimensional letters uh, for Amherst College. Um, in this, we're also indicating the name of the road uh, as you go through. Um, to note, there's another one of these that will happen um, at our second uh, at another secondary gateway that happens down on East Drive as well. Um, one of the um, one of our uh, recommendations uh, from our design re uh, our, our historical commission uh, meeting last night, uh, we used to have this particular wayfinding sign happen um, up here. Um, and with the town wayfinding that was happening there, um, it was recommended that we look at relocating it across Boltwood. Um, so this would carry uh, messaging for admission, athletic center, um, and just making sure that folks are, understand that we're going going up to the next left on South Pleasant. So they're not trying to take a left on, onto a wrong way at Boltwood. Um, again, our, our messaging is still kind of in flux um, as we're working with the planning and the town sign program. So, you know, uh, the messaging that we have right now, what we're really asking for is, is kind of more approval on the shape and form um, and uh, you know, obviously those messages will have to have coordination as this is happening kind of in real time. Um, coming the opposite way, or actually coming uh, catty corner, uh, 90 degrees, coming down uh, Route 116 um, towards college. Uh, we have a, a, a sign here. Um, again, um, in our discussions, the town sign is actually being slid further back. Um, so it's gonna happen somewhere in this location here. Um, again, this is gonna just carry, right now carrying messages for Amherst College Museums and visitor parking. We did that because the uh, current thinking is that the, the major museums within town are going to be carried on the, uh, the town wayfinding versus the, um, versus the you know, kind of the Emily Dickinson, which is actually part of Amherst College, but uh, really a um, really a you know kind of a cultural icon for for the area. So Emily Dickinson, um, the Yiddish bookstore, uh, those type of museums will be carried on the on the town wayfinding versus the Amherst wayfinding. And we didn't want to get the word museums confused. Um, we wanted to make sure that. Uh, folks understood that the Amherst College Museums, meaning the Bineski Museum and Mead Art Museum. Um, coming the opposite way uh, on Route uh, 116 North, uh, 116 South, um, we, we also have another sign uh, located at this location. Um, again, this is directing folks to turn left down college. Um, to go to the uh, Amherst College Museums and Visitor Parking, um, and then straight ahead uh, for the admission uh, and athletics complex. And we can go through the actual face layouts uh, in just after this uh, with the with the elevations, and then also see how we're starting to that we're starting to have that coordination with the uh, town wayfinder messaging. Um, at the top of the green, uh, this is at Quadrangle and Boltwood. Uh, we have a small sign uh, that says that again, uh, has folks turn to the left to go to museums and visitor parking. Uh, and then really kind of in, uh, enforce the accessible parking for Johnson Chapel and museums up uh, along uh, first year quad. 
what one of the major um, kind of desires of this program and ob objectives of the program is to maintain a pedestrian campus for Amherst College um, and really not having folks drive up um, Quadrangle Drive and through first year quad um, and around the circle um, with the amount of students that are, that are going uh, to and from and visitors that are going to and from uh, various museums uh, and events and classes. Um, down at Converse Hall, again, this is Bo Bo uh, Boltwood Avenue and um, down here is college. Um, we have a small uh, building identification that happens. It says Converse Hall, the year that it was founded uh, and also the address. Um, here you'll also start to see where we're looking at introducing some of those secondary colors from the uh, visual identity toolkit. Um, on South Pleasant at 79 South Pleasant, um, these are, this is the uh, kind of roadway uh, and entrance to HR, as we had mentioned, uh, for Amherst College. So this is, this is just carries the message 79 South Pleasant offices. Um, again, the year that it was founded. And instead of having, um, since we do have 79 South Pleasant already um, as the address, um, this one is particular, in particular is carrying the Amherst College um, kind of byline underneath. Um, down the hill from um, Converse, um, the Converse Hall um, at on Boltwood, uh, just coming up right before the um, the the bus stop, uh, we have a uh, parking identification sign for Converse Lot. Um, this would carry message uh, messages for permit parking, um, no ever, no overnight parking, and again the little byline for Amherst College in, in a light gray color. Um, as we talked about the tri-sided kiosk, um, so the tri-sided kiosk, again, the entry to Amherst HR department is here. Um, so really, uh, and this is that 79 South Pleasant uh, office. Um, this is happening in the little green right to the, right to the uh, west of it. Um, and these kiosks would, would have uh, casework uh, that would carry the opportunity for uh, a campus map and campus directory. Um, one of the things that I should note is um, one of the efforts that the college is taking on is also uh, a land acknowledgement. So acknowledging where uh, the, pre the previous indigenous uh, tribes that used to live on the land, um, as well as uh, opportunities um, with that um, to uh, kind of broadcast and let folks know about events that are happening um, in this particular case, an event that was happening at the Kirby, uh, maybe a schedule of openings that is happening at the Mead, um, something about the, you know, about the Beneski, really kind of bringing this out into the public to really encourage the public to kind of come onto Amherst campus, explore the museums, explore the amenities and really explore the view. Um, again, uh, back onto Boltwood, uh, this is Converse Hall. Our Converse lot sign here is, is down here. As you walk up Converse lot, as you're walking towards Converse Hall, um, this low pedestal based uh, map tabletop. Again, as Andrew mentioned, this reclaimed or reused granite that we, that we see throughout the Amherst College campus. Um, something trying to keep this low and kind of um, more accessible and uh, not not uh, uh, not blocking views, uh, but really just in kind of including this map uh, and the, and the directory. And again, these would also carry that um, the the land acknowledgement message the, that Amherst College is uh, is is crafting. Um, um, so, Sam, Sam yep. I ask a quick. Is anybody else experiencing a significant lag um, between when Sam changes slides or is, are you guys okay? okay. Yeah, there's a lag, but it's I'm catching up. Okay. Yeah, huge, huge lag. Yeah, so Sam, just be aware that when you click on a slide, for some of us, it doesn't automatically change over. It's okay. About 10 seconds or so. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Yeah. It, what's up with um, it, I'm also having trouble following your mouse. Like when you say over here, like I'm not seeing the mouse. Okay. Sure. Um, so we're shall on, we? We're on the what, thank you slide right now. We are, and that was the end of the that was the end of the rendered location. So, uh, sorry, I didn't realize that we were lagging. No, no, I, I thought it was just me. That's why I didn't volunteer the question. <coughs> Apologies. I, I'm more than happy to uh, go through those uh, as well as the elevations. Okay. So maybe is it time for us to discuss the various signs? Um, you're finished with your presentation. Is that correct? Uh, for the most part, yes. Okay. So, so if it makes sense, perhaps the board should go and review each of the signs yeah. uh, one by one. Right. Um, yep. And Sorry. perhaps Samuel can pull up uh, the, the map that's uh, associated with the specific sign and the elevation and the layout plan. Yep. Okay. Uh, so just again, for clarification, the signs you just we've just looked at and you've discussed, these are signs that are in some aspect of public way, or you're showing us signs that aren't necessarily uh, under the purview of the design review board. Um, uh, All the signs that we are showing you are, are, in, are under the purview of the design okay. review board right. because of their locations. Okay, I didn't realize. <laughs> Okay, so if we were to yeah. start in order of your presentation, right. it, we would be starting with the Gateway Science Gateway College Science. and South Pleasant yeah. Street. Right. Uh, okay. And Chris, did you have something to say? I just wanted to remind everyone that um, it's a little confusing, but the board is being asked to make recommendations to town council and their committee, Town Services and Outreach, or TSO. And that's all about things in the public way and things on the town common. And you're also being asked to make recommendations to the planning board for signs that are proposed within the area of jurisdiction of the design review board, but that are on private property because Amherst College has some signs that are on private property that they're proposing. So okay. um, just- I think there was a little bit of, of confusion there, Christine. Does that mean that the signs that are in residential zoned properties that are going before the planning board next week because some of those were not included in the presentation sam just gave no those aren't uh, necessary to be included it's only okay. signs within the um, area of drb jurisdiction but as you showed um at least i believe at least two and possibly more of those signs are on private property they're not in the public way so um, I just wanted to make sure that, um, yes. you know, everyone was okay. clear that it's both signs in the public way and on the town common and some signs on private property that are within the jurisdiction of the design review board. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Okay. So, all right. So let's take a look or discuss. I do have a question. I'm seeing images. Are those supposed to be light posts? The, uh, the two, the two grading images. Yeah. Um, those will be those will be the those are the new proposed crosswalk signals that the DOT will be mass DOT will be putting. In. Oh, OK. All right. Couldn't tell. All right. So uh, board members, uh, anybody like to uh, offer some thoughts about this particular sign? Erica or Lindsay? Uh, sure. I'll just start by saying I really appreciate the the consistency, the package, given the, the range of types of information that needs to be conveyed, uh, that it is clearly a family with uh, color, materiality, fonts, etc. And I think that that's working really well. I think this is maybe my favorite sign, just because of the incorporated seating height granite. Um, generally, though, I, I like the, the goal of some visual porosity, and I think that that's especially nice here. You can see under and above the sign um, really functions well as a uh, sitting in a car perspective, but also as a sort of landscape feature. Yeah, I agree. I think it's very attractive, perfect size and something that should have been there 
hundred years ago. So, uh, yeah, Lindsay, I would I would echo the same sentiments. I think it's very tastefully done. It's fitting to the setting and uh, clean, um, but also you know very noticeable. Um, I really I really appreciate that you didn't carry the the plinth all the way under that there's that kind of like window um just really lightens it um yeah so I, I would say it's got my vote do you think people it, oh, this may be sort of wacky but the people will actually see that as a bench kind of driving up to the center of town could i we assume that could we expect students to be sitting on it or is it wide enough for somebody to sit down on it. Are you talking about the the panel, the, the sign panel itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order to get up there, you'd be hopping up at probably a good three and a half to four feet. Oh, really? So it's okay. not it's not comfortable. All right. Comfortable okay. to sit on. Um, it's also only about. I would say I think we we modeled it at only at about set, uh, about eight inches wide, eight to ten inches wide. Okay. So it's not really not super deep. But uh, the granite it's... portion next to it is designed to be a seat if you right. want to sit there. Okay. Yeah. All right. The granite portion that is to the right in this image. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The granite portion is really meant to be that that kind okay. of like. So it has that bench. Come have a seat. <laughs> you can put some spikes on top of the sign panel. And that <laughs> but don't sit in front of the letter. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go on to your next sign that you would like us to consider? Sure, so be? this is our secondary gateway. I'll show you the rendering right now. Um, and then this is the elevation, um, which gives you the dimensions mm -hmm. um, and also the uh, kind of zoomed in location. So yeah. again, okay. South Pleasant and Quadrangle. Okay. Any comments from the board? Um, I have no objections to it at all, but. I'm still trying to find. You see it? Yeah. And you're saying that this is actually on town common property. Is that correct? That's. Yes, this one yeah. is. All right, okay. <laughs> Any, uh, I, I have no objections. I think okay. it's, again, it's clean, it's tasteful. Um, I really like the offset, the way it's mounted, the bracket that kind of holds it off of the post. I think the post is fitting for a historic campus while not being too ornate. And, um, and as Erica said, it's it's clearly you know consistent with the family, and um, the text is is clean and easy to read. So I think it's great. Good. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. I didn't know that was called Quadrangle Drive. So I'm learning <laughs> a little bit about the, the campus. So the next series are going to be our vehicular directionals. Uh -huh. uh, there, Catherine so was right there, right why we need signs, right? <laughs> Okay. B103. You're going to move this one. Is that correct? You said you this, this one has moved. Has moved and remind us yep. where it went. It used, it used to be, um, if you see this uh, kind of grade in element up here, that is the town wayfinding. We oh, used yeah. to be right next to it. Oh, okay. Here. So we've relocated our sign and to pulled the, it back. To okay. this corner here. All right. And to clarify, this was the biggest point of discussion that last night's historical yeah. commission meeting. It took right. most of the discussion. And their yeah. biggest concern, and, and if Jan or Chris want to correct me if I'm putting words in anybody's mouth, was uh, sign proliferation along this strip yeah. because there's yeah. two state highway signs. Uh -huh. There's the you know turn lane signs. There's a proposed there's town right. sign. There's our sign. Yeah. I, yeah. I would like to point out too that this is. In terms of location, it's general. What you're seeing here, we may pull it a little more forward prior to the light post, for example, but generally the idea is that it's located at this corner here um, prior to both. Mm -hmm. Well, people coming up that 
approach, your sign is, I think, going to stand out. I mean, it's an attractive sign, but it's really going to attract more attention than the poor little wayfaring sign and that the green uh, directional sign for 116. Um, I don't know whether that matters or not. I mean, it, it is going to be the, I think, the most important sign that people are going to see. But, uh, I, you know, the green sign has another one under it that's kind of crooked that says um, <laughs> town center to the right or something like that. Oh, okay. and we, were, we were hoping that the state would be agreeable to take that down if our wayfinding sign does the same thing. Uh -huh. and also, there's two of these lane signs within a few feet of each other. There actually it's are. This image is old, Jan. Just uh, this is a, a, a street Google Street View image, and I went by there today. And actually, there's only one. one. Yeah. Oh, good! Somebody already knocked it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One down. All right. Yeah. And on the um, quadrant map, the there is um, maybe it's sheet ZP06. I, I, I'm looking at the packet that Maureen sent to the design review board prior to the meeting, and I understand this is updated, but there's reference to two signs. One is welcome sign 2A and welcome sign 4A. Mm -hmm. Whose are those? Those are the town signs. Those are town signs yep. in addition to town sign number nine. Correct. So town sign number nine would be a wayfinding sign. That's the new wayfinding, right? Yep. Yeah. Welcome sign 2A would be a welcome to Amherst uh, yeah. sign. Uh, and to give uh, the, the board uh, clarity, um, 4A is a proposed due location. For 4A, it has not been approved yet by the town. It's also a welcome to Amherst. It's also a welcome to Amherst. Yeah. Uh, I agree with, um, in, in general, I agree with the, the worry about the proliferation of signs and signage. And I think it was a, a appreciated move to, to pull yours back to the other side of the um, intersection. I think that it will yeah. help with the visual clutter. Right. Yeah. But we well, also discussed uh, last night the possibility of the welcome sign going at the actual beginning of Amherst um, down at the corner of University and, and um, Route 9, which is where we had been trying to put it, you might remember, I do. all along, and then there were the, nothing worked out. But now there's the new development by Barry Jacobs down there. That little brick house is gone. And uh, Chris, you had said that you'd talk to him about possibly putting it there. I still think that's better than either of these locations, which is A, all, you're already in Amherst. Uh, I mean, you're, you've been in Amherst for a while. And B, it's the place where we have the problem with the most signs. Yeah. yeah. Has there um, been Brestrup, a- Ms. Uh, uh, Brestrup has raised her hand. Oh, sorry. I can't see that. Um, yes, you are right. We are um, considering moving 4A um, down to the intersection with University Drive. Um, however, uh, the town manager thinks that this welcome sign 4A um, is important to the town and he would prefer to have it in this location. So there's going to be further discussion about that. Welcome sign 2A um, might be better placed back um, in East Amherst Village Center, rather than being placed here on the Commons. So we've been talking about the potential for um, moving it back uh, closer to where you enter Amherst um, from Belchertown. And um, we haven't yet decided on a, a new location, but these two signs, 4A and 2A, are kind of in a, in a flexible okay. situation right now, in flux. Okay. Yeah, I think as we had discussed it before, those really are those kind of gateway to the town, not to the downtown. And so, yeah, anyways, I guess if this conversation is about B1003, um, I think it's fine. Where are you currently are showing it? Hey, thank you. I, I agree. I think that, um, you know, it's something to definitely be talking about is how many signs exist in that location. But I 
I think the choice of where to move the sign to was, was very, um, very intelligent. And I think it works well, just uh, separates, you know, that intersection from the, um, the one up the road with the stoplight. And it, it seems visually clear that you're indicating something that's happening at, at the first corner, um, not conflicting with what's happening at the next corner. Um, and it ties in with the um, change in the paving with the crosswalk and the brick. So I think it's, I think it's really clear and um, it's a good choice. So one thought was, could that sign where you stay on the same side of the road as it is now, but move it further east down the sidewalk? Uh, or is there a, sort of a formula for signage that if you have it too far removed from the corner, people won't pay attention? I mean, if it, I, th I think the difference between after the light post and before the light post isn't really going to affect its functionality. It's really more about sight lines. And what we would like is an opportunity to physically stand there and, and stake the sign advantageously based on the, the sight lines to uh, the light post uh, and that sort of thing. So okay. if, if this position is, is free and clear from a sight lines perspective, we'll leave it here. But you know what happens when we actually implement signage is we do a staking with the fabricator and we uh, put down stakes for every sign location. And then there's a bit of an investigation in terms of utilities, you know, underground utilities, things like that. So there's always some amount of um, adjustment in the field at that point, but generally this is the spot we'd like to target for this sign, um, take it out of the mix of all the signs occurring after this, um, uh, after Boltwood and, and uh, just locate it as optimally as possible for viewing. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Any other uh, comments? And if not, we'll move on to the next sign. What would that be? Uh, our next sign would be B1006. Oh, yeah. um, this is our, uh, our second uh, vehicular wayfinding. Um, and in the meantime, let me pull up, I'm going to pull up uh, slide 15. Um, so we can actually uh, look at each one of these uh, locations. So the one that we just looked at um, is this one here. Right. This is the one that's happening down at the corner of Boltwood and, and uh, College. Yeah. So the admissions athletic center uh, next left on South Pleasant. Um, and this is the assumed, uh, this is the proposed messaging uh, right now. I know that their messaging is still up in the air uh, for, um, for the uh, town wayfinding. And then the next sign is, is, um, is which one here? B1006 is the one that yeah, we, were right. uh, that we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, one thing to note is um, you'll see here in the proposed messaging, there's an Amherst College Mead Art Museum and Vanessa yeah, Museum. Can you zoom into that? Can you zoom into that sign? Yep. And, and just to be clear, this is northbound on 116. Right, yeah. Approaching the common. Right. Hi. <laughs> so, so, okay. So these messages are gonna be, re will, will be removed uh. from, the town, from the town program. Okay. So could you so May I say a something? This is, yeah. is a little confusing because one of these signs, um, the one at the bottom um, with the green downtown, um, that is a sign that will be seen as you're moving northbound on 116. The other sign on top of that, that the town is proposing um, is the reverse. So it's on the reverse side of this sign, it would be seen as you're moving southbound, but we, um, we will be taking off the reference to Amherst College Mead Museum and Beneski Museum. All right, so this is side one, this is side two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not eight blades per, per side. 
Okay. And we discussed that last night and uh, talked about potentially that being too many blades per sign. So that's something that we're going to take um, under advisement. Okay. One thing that I'm noticing is, um, and it was apparent in the last slide that you were showing at that intersection, I'm not trying to backtrack, but um, that all of your all of your signs are the same height and it's clear from this slide that um, that's to accommodate multiple um, multiple messages, um, which I think is, is very clearly done. Um, and I guess my question is in locations where you only have a single location that you're directing, would is there the potential to add New messaging below is that some is that part of the intention to have the band? I mean, I know that visually it's nice to have the uniformity of the the same height throughout. Um, but I'm just curious if if there's if the idea is that these could adapt over time to allow for additional directions um, to be added to the signs. Yes, the, the intent is that you know, um, that there is that kind of flexibility uh, for the college to, um, to introduce another message. Our rule of thumb, just so you know, is if you're in a car driving down the road, you can really take in about five messages at most. Um, and you can see here, we've got uh, on the, the maximum here is about four. Um, so we would like some flexibility there. We're still, working with the college on, on final messaging. This is pretty close, but there may be one or two additional uh, destinations um, that we'd like to be able to add uh, if necessary. Things have gotten whittled down from previous messages, uh, which were fuller than what you're seeing here because of our coordination with the town. So now we were referring to the downtown here we were also referring to Emily Dixon, Dickinson, but we, we've, we've agreed that those messages perhaps are more appropriate on the town sign rather than the college mm -hmm. sign. Um, but we would like to retain the flexibility with these panel sizes. Thank you. So yeah. for, for example, it, it very, very easily what's, uh, what you're seeing there would, could be two separate items. Yeah. We've, we've got some work to do in house still around visitor parking. You probably all know this, but there really isn't any visitor parking uh, at Amherst College. <laughs> I'm sure you've all looked for it. Um, so <laughs> we've, got, we've got a little bit of work to do around this sign in particular. Anything that's, that's calling out visitor parking, we know we've got a little bit of wordsmithing and, and, and yeah. soul searching to do. Interesting. Well, I think um, the sign itself, um, same comments as before. I think it works here. Um, I This is another place where there's a lot of, between the, the state highway signage and the town signage and the college's signage, uh, <laughs> there's a, and the bus stop and all, there's a lot going on. And, and so this is a place where, um, you know, I think, ongoing coordination between the town and the college about the precise placement of the signs would be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I think it's... Could we see the uh, sign? Of, um, you, you had a slide with the sign. Yeah, that one, yeah. Uh, so they're spaced far enough that the, your sign doesn't stand get in the way of all the other stuff that's coming up right uh, yeah. yeah or could you move that so i i think what, what i suppose bothers me is the placement of the sign could you move it further south is there any reason why it has to be there or is it a matter of a driver retaining the message long enough to know to turn uh to turn the corner there's all kinds of fa i mean those are really good questions uh there's all kinds of factors one yeah. is allowing them enough time to see it, but also 
not too much time that they forget what the heck was on the sign by the time. Exactly. They yeah. Okay. But the other thing is that we are coordinating with the town in terms of their directional sign as well, which is further south. So as ours get further south, so does theirs. And so it becomes this, this problem of, um, you know, we're, we're just getting too far from the decision point. So um, I think Tom and Chris raised a good point that there may also be opportunities with the um, imp street improvements that are planned to coordinate with the DOT, not just about the street edge, but also um, um, modifications to existing state signs, potentially that might be redundant. And can we clean up some of that as well? But um, Yeah, Andrew, I know that the- They don't know how to play ball, but it's yeah. worth trying. Sorry, I know, I know uh, Tatiana and Gina have, uh, who are our landscape architect partners um, in, the, in our gateways, um, have been talking with, uh, talking with the DOT about kind of relocating and reducing the, the number of signs, uh, highway, highway guide signs that are, that are there right now. That's good. I didn't know that. That's great. Yep. Hey, um, this is a, a silly thing, maybe, um, but I figured I'd throw it out there. I, I believe that there is a, a, a crosswalk sign there, that, that uh, orange um, yes, diamond. Yes, there is. Okay, so that, believe it or not, is a hangover for when there used to be a crosswalk there that we eliminated over 15 years ago. <laughs> so that's not a crosswalk warning sign that a crosswalk is coming up? At, at the, the intersection? intersection? I mean, generally yeah. you don't have them for intersections, right? Yeah. right. No, I, I think it's there because there, see how the, the sidewalk comes along and then it kind of bends and continues? Yeah, yeah. That sidewalk used to just go right to a crosswalk that went straight across and up the stairs to oh, College Hall. Interesting. But literally, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding, like 2004, that was eliminated. I'll have to talk to my cousin Vinny. I'm sure he can, uh, he can arrange something. <laughs> Or perhaps, another, perhaps we can we can file the right form to have that sign removed. Whoever go. knocked down the one of the lane signs, get their sledge and have them go out there again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Well, just to finish up. Sorry, go ahead, Catherine. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, in response to the the signs that we were just looking at, um, I guess prior to this one, I don't know if we officially moved on. Um, but I, I think just wanted to echo Erica's comments about just making sure that, you know, there is a lot of information and it sounds like you are all aware that we want to keep things as clear as possible, but, um, assuming that some of that information that's being provided by these new Amherst College wayfinding signs is being eliminated on the town wayfinding signs, we just want to make sure that people aren't um, feeling unsure about how to, which signs to be looking at and um, that it's really obvious that anything Amherst College related is being addressed as, you know, perhaps even before the town way finding signs and that, you know, you would want people to feel like they wouldn't they wouldn't be looking for the Amherst College information on the wayfinding signs because they didn't have it yet. Um, so maybe just thinking of it as a sequence, um, which I'm sure you already are when you're approaching the signs that um, if, they're, if they're looking, people are just gonna look for signs, right? And so if they're looking for that information on the town wayfinding, because that sign comes first when they're driving and they don't see it there, um, we just want to make sure that the Amherst College sign is is really visible soon thereafter, or perhaps beforehand. I think that's all. Yeah, um, can I respond to that? Of course, sure. Um, that actually came up last night as well, Lizzie, and and um, we've been talking about that. I think it's a it's a point for uh, further coordination between the two town systems. Um, because it does seem like there is a logic to um, the Amherst College sign occurring uh, further south and then the town wayfinding sign um, being after that. As one comes up from the south, you know, you, you will have been passing by the college 
pretty obviously, and, and there'll be this vocabulary of these purple signs, um, aubergine signs, and um, you know, on both sides of the road, right? As you as you come out, kind of come up through a, f a few of them here and there, whatever. And so, um, to have the Amherst College sign first seems logical, and and then the next being like a much broader message of all the cultural resources and town center mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff um, as you're approaching the center of town. So we were having that same conversation. I, I think it needs a little bit more um, discussion. Great, thank you. Okay, can we uh, move on to a new sign? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on to B004. Uh, this is a, also a vehicular um, directional. Uh, this one, um, going back to our, our plan, uh, this one happens uh, just uh, to the south of 79 South Pleasant. Um, there isn't uh, actually a town sign at this location. All of the town signage actually happens further up at Main Street. Let me see it again. Well, I find of course. It. Yeah. I'm not oriented. Okay. All right. So this is just north. Is this Selen Street there? Yeah, uh, Selen. I think you're right, uh, Chris. Yeah. I always forget the name of that one there. Yes. So just north of Selen Street. Yep. And then um, just to clarify, there is a sign that's associated to uh, the building at 79 South Pleasant Street. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so could you show where this proposed sign is in relation to that sign, as well as the tri-sided sign in front sure. of 79? Yeah. So our, our sign here, this is the sign for the uh, building ID for 79 South Pleasant. Uh -huh. at this location. The tri-sided kiosk is about here. And then the sign that we were just looking at is down here. And the actual building is sort of in that pink area, kind of just up like yeah. right here. It's hard, to, it's hard to see, but uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So the, the, the directional one we're talking about is actually in front of Sealy Dorm, uh, not in front of 79 South Pleasant. So the view from the um, the rendering is a little uh, foreshortened. It makes the distance between Selen Street and um, Route 9 look very short, but it's really not very short. Right. It's a lot more length there yeah. than it appears. Yes, actually, Chris, you're, you're right. And I think that there's an inconsistency between the map location and where it's shown in this rendering, now that you've mentioned that. That is true. Well, there's a lot of stuff on there's uh, a lot of stuff there. I mean, little signs, big signs. I mean, the flags are temporary and there's parking meters. That, I mean, your sign stands out beautifully, but it does remind me there's just so much mm. stuff. <laughs> I don't know how, you know, arrows here, arrows there, as if people you know, don't have a you, there section. Can you go back to the plan, Sam? Sure. So we can make a note to adjust yeah. the location on the plan. Yeah, I think it's more like where the pink tag is. We're like back. Yeah, yeah right about in there. Right about yep. here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there was a, uh, the taller pole had a um, sort of a flag or a banner on it. Is, what was that? Was that an Amherst College? Uh, no. Was that part? Uh, it's not Amherst College. No, I, I, it was, no. it's what probably it? the bid. It's probably the business improvement district oh. put up the banners all over town I to see. announce various events and things. Yeah. Um, the thing I wanted to mention is the town um, may be coming into some money if we're lucky. And if we are lucky, we may be redoing the sidewalks around the town common in this location. And um, if that happens, all of these signs will get removed and then there will have to be decisions about where to put them back. So uh -huh. I think we'll have an opportunity to clean things up a bit. That would be good, but really. Okay, all right. Any uh, 
questions, suggestions regarding this first sign that we just looked at heading towards the intersection? Okay, if not, do you have another sign? Moving on. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, we're, we're now uh, into our secondary vehicular directional that happens at uh, Quadrangle Drive and Boltwood. So I will go into, right. so this, if you remember, um, was our secondary gateway sign. So this was the tall sign that said Amherst College, uh, Quadrangle Drive. And then up um, on that, uh, on the, as you're going up the hill, just prior to Boltwood. And again, we're working through messaging on this one as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a, Any it's... Uh, suggestions, comments? I think it works well. It's clear, it's consistent, I have no issues. Uh -huh. um, I think I agree, but I'm curious about whether it's on the, um, attachment from the, the the sign the aubergine sign to the post there appears to be an additional vertical element so let's go so the way that the bracket is made um the bracket uh and this is actually on all of the signs it's um the the it's a square post rotated at 45 degrees so we're mounting to the corner um, each one of those has a, uh, for lack of a better term, an angle yeah. trace that goes in, and then it has three to four uh, one-inch uh, one square posts that are mm -hmm. also rotated at that 45. So they're little diamonds that hold the panel on. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the drawing, Andrew. Nice sketch, um, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. I, I, I see it now. It, 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 it makes sense. It's, I have just noticed it in this particular uh, render and it's fine, I guess. It seems of all, you've been talking about lightness and this is kind of a heavier detail, um, but I don't mind it. Yeah, I sort of like the heavier base myself. Doesn't look so spindly. Are any other questions or comments? As you noted, uh, you may not be promising visitor parking. <laughs> uh, you may be changing some of the wording, but uh, the sign placement's okay. Do you have another sign? We do. <laughs> um, we We're have... getting there, though. We're, We're getting... getting there. We're almost <laughs> done. We're almost done. It's kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> One by okay. one, same theme though. I, 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 never, yeah. thought, I, I never thought I'd be washed by a by a, a design review board, but this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love signs. We love... Um, so this is at Converse Hall. This is our Converse yeah. Hall location. Um, to bring that into plan view, um, this is that particular location mm -hmm. here. Um, this is our 79 right. South Pleasant that we were just talking about. Right. And then one of the other ones that was asked to be rendered and to shown was Alumni House, which is outside of that of the Design Review Board District, okay. but it's it happens over here in front of Alumni House. Right. So that's this one. Yeah. And this is a prime example where you can see those secondary colors uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of showing up. So was there any question in your mind that every, that every that the sign should be elevated or did you consider having lower signs uh, around, the, around the buildings? I see an advantage to this, but uh, you know, just have a smaller, lower sign in front of every building. It's not so, noticeable enough. So we did do, we did do the um, smaller, lower signs. Most of those happen um, uh, within the campus. Okay. Um, really why we did this is um, it's right, it's really located right on the road uh -huh. um, and there's parking. 
So we wanted to be able to get the, the sign up above uh, parked vehicles. Sure, okay. It, yeah, and it's not, it's not every building that's on a, a major road. You know, it's <laughs> those, those few that really have a lot of visitor traffic. I see, okay. Good. So there's kind of a hierarchy. Yeah, sure. The human resources department is in uh, 79 South Pleasant offices and uh, there are a number of events in Converse Hall as well. So uh -huh. these are locations that have like first time visitors who are not as familiar with the campus as say uh, a residence hall, for example, right. which would just yeah, get us- as, as it was pointed, there's parking there. So a low sign might be obscured by <clears throat> vehicles. <clears throat> So that alum, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say the alumni house sign is going to be on the uh, on the drive as you enter into the alumni house. That little. It's actually going to be uh, directly in front of alumni house. So, oh, OK. Uh, yeah. You'll see it as you're kind of driving. Um, I All can't right. remember the name of the road that that runs by alumni in the yeah. parking lot, but you'll see it from kind of from the street. Yeah, um, but you won't. It, it's not going to be. It's not meant to be out by the road. There is. There are a, There is two signs that are out by the road which identify alumni lot. Okay, are we going to see those or? Um, I believe that we have those. Uh, we do have those rendered in our okay. in our parking lot um, IDs. So. Okay. But they are also uh, pretty far outside of the kind of. DRB. Right. Yeah. So, just, yeah. But they were asked to be rendered. So we did, right. we did include them. Are they going to be on high on a post or are they going to be? They uh, will. They'll be identical to what we're having at uh, Converse Hall lot. Okay. All right. Any uh, comments? My, my question was just what yeah. the color coding, sorry if you said it already and I missed it, but what the color coding of the bar at the bottom above the address is. Um, I know it's part of your palette that you showed at the beginning, but is it also indicative of any anything? It's it's really not a code, code color coded system. It's actually kind of random, um, and it was really an, an effort just to introduce a little bit of color mm -hmm. and energy into the campus. There was a concern. Um, the original design was perhaps a little too staid. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so injecting a little bit of energy was, was, um, was desired and we're doing that through color. And we kind of like the idea that it's more random as opposed to a, a color code system um, that people need to figure out. Mm -hmm. so. I, I feel as though it may become a, something that people want to figure out. I had the same... <laughs> question that Lindsay did. I was looking for uh, a system. Is it an academic building, an administrative building, um, an assembly building? Uh, I, was, I was looking for that. And uh, I wonder if there will be some game that people will be playing in order to try and figure out your secret message. Um, I like the idea of inserting color, but I, I'm not convinced of the, the randomness of the, the color selection. Um, and then well, another I question. I didn't say we didn't have a secret message, but I'm not about to reveal that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. And then on the, the rendered version of uh, this sign in front of Converse Hall, we see a vertical band of color. That's on the, the, the that's on the edge. That's on the edge of the of the sign. So the signs uh, are about uh, about one and three quarter to two inches thick. So it would be that that color actually wraps the top down the side and yeah. along the bottom. Yeah, I think there's an opportunity just to kind of follow up. I mean, I, I love the idea of injecting color and I think it works really well as a palette, um, but it would be nice if there was something consistent. I mean, I think it's, it's possible that down the road you'll wish, you know, that, that there will be a need for um, a certain amount of consistency there. So it just might be something to think about, like, like Erica said, is it based on the building type? Is it, um, you know, what it, what is it? It, you know, it seems like there's an opportunity there. I think right. it's a valid point, honestly. Um, and something we'll, we'll, we'll give some more thought to. 
Um, one thing to note, uh, just talking a little bit about the, the color schemes, uh, you will notice um, all of our uh, vehicular directionals uh, are carrying the, the purple color scheme. So we are being very consistent with those, um, as well as um, the uh, that 79 South Pleasant also carrying that purple. So really, we're definitely looking at um, the purple really being, um, you know, that's primarily where I've been, where we've been kind of focusing that Amherst purple, the Amherst brand purple is really outside of the, the campus proper. So really kind of uniform, making that super uniform of being the, the aubergine and the Amherst purple. So uh, we are looking, you know, that was the, the first layer of color. Um, and now we're working on those, those sec, that secondary layer of the color palette as well. Great. Miss um, uh, Catherine, I'm afraid I need to excuse myself. I have a planning okay. board meeting at right. 30. So okay. thank you very much. All right. Thanks really very much, Chris. To be part of this, thank but you. I need to leave. Yeah. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Yeah. So just for clarification, I'm learning a lot about the roads around here. On, on your sign for Converse Hall, it says Boltwood. Correct. Is that Boltwood that runs in front of Converse Hall on the Amherst College campus? It is. Right? Oh yeah. my God. No. All right. That's it. Who knew? <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's technically the Amherst Common, the green across the street from Congress Hall is the extension of Yes, the that's right. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more signs? Uh, well, we have 79 South Pleasant, which we've discussed. Uh, again, right. you know, this one has that purple, purple yeah. on, the, on the return. Right. Uh, we will make the update uh, to the location for the vehicular directional. Um, we have uh, down the hill a little bit is the Converse lot right. uh, sign, and that is the parking lot ID. Yeah, uh, that parking lot ID uh, happens here. This is Boltwood Avenue here. Yeah. Converse Hall would be here. Um, this is the green opposite. Oh. So that is D one zero D zero zero six. Is there? Uh, where you have that sign, is there an entrance to the parking lot at that end or, or is the entrance to the parking lot further there, down? There's an entrance to the parking lot there, here. Okay, all right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then there's another, actually another entrance to the parking lot off of college at about this location here. And we uh -huh. do have a sign there as well oh, uh, for, for Converse. Uh, however, uh, that's, you know, we didn't, we didn't have that one in the plan um, just because it's outside of the zone. Okay. Any, uh, and the last is the two map locations, right, Sam? Yep. Um, I really appreciate that you included the parking information on there. I think that was a really good use of yeah. space. Um, as, long, as long as it doesn't change, I guess. Um, but no, I, I, think, I think it works well. And I would just carry the same comment over about the, the color um if you know here's a kind of an example of where you know par parking could be the light blue or the dark um so uh but otherwise i think it i think it reads very well um I, just one, one comment and respond to that um lindsay that by by incorporating that it's it's a, a much more streamlined message around um you know, parking and, and whether you should be there or not and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That actually eliminates a bunch of other signs that we've got scattered around that are really uh, yeah. wordy and difficult. And, you know, so it, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, a, a good improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what I was imagining that now you mm -hmm. don't need all those other signs. So I think yeah. that's great. And it appears that you're not using in the background either the Amherst College uh, uh, emblem or the mammoth. Um, Correct. Uh, yeah, I, I like that. It, um, it seems we, like, you know, yeah. go we ahead. Re we re we've reserved the use of the mammoth to anything having to deal with athletics. Mm -hmm. So you will see the mammoth out by Pratt Field. Okay. Uh, and we've reserved the use of the, the, the shield or the, the, the college seal strictly to admissions. So there's okay. only one sign in the entire program that uses that, that 
Okay. And, and uh, the earlier point, the the visual identity toolkit developed by the communications group really yeah. uh, restricts the logo to really kind of you know yeah. marquee locations. Yeah. yeah, very good. Any any more signs? We have two more, which are two maps. There you go. The grand finale. Grand finale, our map. Here. <laughs> so this is the one that's out in front of 79 South Pleasant. Right. And then if we can we can lump these two together, this is the one again that's on Boltwood just south of uh, or just just down from this is down just down from this is Boltwood Ave. This is Converse Hall. Our Converse Hall sign would be here. Our Converse parking sign would be here. That's, that's, my, that's my car in the foreground. If you're <laughs> It really and just that. and just to clarify, the sign that's behind the proposed desktop kiosk, we would all hope is uh, is a temporary sign related to COVID, right? Correct. That's exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's important to note that one of our key strategies to the wayfinding program is to provide a map at each of the um, primary parking lots on campus, so that as soon as you get out of your car. You can orient as to where you are on campus and where the various destinations are in relation to your position. Um, and the, the hope is that we're, we're really trying to reduce the number of, you know, uh, breadcrumbs that will be required throughout the campus. If we can provide these kinds of maps at really key locations like parking lots um, to help people orient. Uh, to the greater whole. So, and each map will have a unique you are here designation that corresponds to your actual location. Sam and Andrew, are the, the bases here um, painted steel? Is it granite? What's the, the gray? It, it's granite. It's the granite, um, reclaimed granite uh, from their stockpile for right. this particular one. And if you go back to the kiosk, Sam, that base is also granite. So it's, it's, yeah. That kiosk, similar to the ones that we have perhaps temporarily in Amherst, do, is it, uh, does it have lights and can it, can the information be changed? Uh, with it's essentially a, a display case. Electronically, okay. It's a lock display case. All there's right. a digital print inside yeah. okay. translucent yes uh, and it would have illumination inside it that would strictly illuminate the translucent print yeah what okay. it's the poster or the map or whatever. Uh -huh. but it's not a we can't change it digitally we would have to reprint it's not a digital sign no it's not sense. a digital sign oh it's right? not a digital sign yep. no. so, okay so you I, I guess then you'll have a policy as to how often you change it and so that you keep the appearance looking fresh and, um, you know, informative. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yep. okay. And then for this location is the, the, the unit paver swoop, is that is that new, an extension of the sidewalk here? The That's sidewalk it. exists and, yeah. and the pavers are new. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I, I like that as a, um, doing it as an extension, uh -huh. giving it some hardscape around it so that that doesn't get all worn uh, uh -huh. in the grass over time. I think yeah. that the granite base is like a nice and classy, <laughs> consistent feature. Sorry. Um, what are the are things? Oh, go ahead, Sorry. I just was gonna continue the comment about the extension but Erica, were you still speaking? No, I think I, I could wrap up. <laughs> mm. My only thought, and I agree, I think it's a nice way to, um, to frame that, that signage um, and kind of keep with the, the paving that's there. My only concern is the, it's all, you know, it's, it's not a plan view, so we can't see exactly what the distance is for walking around it. Um, but it's, but it, it feels like it might be a little tight on the right side, um, just looking at the image. So I would just, I would just want to make sure that people have enough space to walk around it 
um, without kind of getting into the, the grass because otherwise, as Erica pointed out, you'll have kind of a worn area. Um, so I think just locating that, really thinking about how much space people need to walk on either side of it might make sense to pull it a little closer to existing sidewalk, but um, I assume you all will look at that in yeah. we, a more dimensional the, way. Yeah, one of the other things that we really need to, um, and we're really focused um, on, uh, especially at this location, is accessibility and being able to get a wheelchair around there, um, mm -hmm. especially at the yeah. uh, orientation. Uh, you know, If we were to have the map facing in that direction, we would definitely want to make sure that somebody could wheel up to that with a wheelchair, mm -hmm. being able to turn and being able to have those ADA, that, those minimum ADA requirements. Um, we just have to work with our landscape architect on that location. Good. Well, it's a perfect location for people getting off the bus or waiting for the bus. Perfect location. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments? Are there any more signs? That is it. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Okay. Um, anybody wrap up? Any uh, thoughts or comments? If not, um... uh, if if the board is interested, I could just uh, quickly review some of the key sure. notes I had. Um, well, we'll start for this one since it's here. Um, so for this sign in front of us, which is the desk, uh, it's not the desktop one. What is no? This, um... this is the tri-sided kiosk, Maureen. Oh, you're, yeah, thank you. Oh, so did we recap? Zero, zero, two. Yep, did we uh, recap on the desktop kiosk? Uh, yep. F3, okay, okay, sorry, yep. I must have. Uh, um, give me one second, I just wanna correct something. Um, so for this, uh, not, uh, okay, so for this one is the, okay. Um, you guys had no issues with this no. one um and let's just i'm going to start over again because i don't want to get confused so the sure. gateway let's see here um no one had any specific recommendations about the gateway sign at college and south pleasant street everyone uh, liked it um the next one which would be a2.002 the secondary gateway sign at south pleasant street um corner with the quadro angle drive uh everyone was fine with it um there were no specific recommendations b1 uh dot zero zero three again um the board was fine with it um jan had um mentioned that the historical commission uh, would like uh if possible to remove the uh mass dot sign that says downtown uh left sign to be removed um and then the following one, B1006, northbound sign on South Pleasant Street, uh, heading towards uh, downtown. Um, members uh, suggested that the Amherst College uh, continue its coordination with the town and Mass DOT, uh, remove any old signs such as that um, misleading sign that says there's a crosswalk coming and any any other um, old signs that are not uh, in use. And um, let's see here, think about uh, viewers for where where this, uh, uh, so uh, Lindsay had suggested that, you know, again, it, in, in the continuation, uh, continued coordination of, the, of these uh, two wayfinding sign systems with the town and, and the college, think about the sequencing of the signs uh, being installed um of of uh if you know amherst college signs should go up first or should they all go up at the same time or in the very um uh, close proximity of time um the next one would be b1004 southbound sign on south pleasant street uh by the bus stop um you and that's the vehicular sign um and um, the board, you know, uh, or it was noted that the this exact location is slightly off and that you'll be updating it for your next um, meeting with the town. The next one is B2002, uh, which is on the campus at the Quadro Angle and Boltwood Ave corner and everyone um, was satisfied with that. Uh, C1005, Boltwood, Boltwood Ave in front of Converse Hall um th this is where the discussion about the colors of the bars on the 
on these sorts of signs at the bottom, the side and the top should have a consistency, um, perhaps by building type or by some sort of uh, system. Um, and think about um, whether there should be a, a consistency there or, you know, or as proposed, which is the sort of randomness or, you know, trying to add a little flavor to it with the coloring. Um, C1004, the board is fine with that 70, Nine South Pleasant Street, D1006, Converse lot, parking lot sign on Boatwood Ave. The board is fine with that. F1002, the tri sided sign in front of 79 Southeast South Pleasant Street. Um, and that was the discussion about making sure that you meet all MM, MAAB and ADA regulations um, about providing uh, accessible routes and um, sort of turning race radius for um, viewing the sign. Uh, and then um, besides ADA, just thinking about, you know, uh, if 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 people are tra traveling on the right side of that um, sign, um, you know, um, provide enough width or um, that people aren't just going to sort of now cut through on the grass and sort of wear out that area. And then F3004, folks were fine with that. And I think that we covered them all. Okay. That covers them all. Yes. So Maureen, do you think we need a motion or can we just offer a support? Yeah, that would be helpful if you guys okay. could make a motion on, uh, you know, whether you want, you know, want give a positive True. recommendation yeah. to the TSO, the town council right. and, okay. uh, and the planning board. Um, okay. And then with those suggestions that I sort of quickly reviewed. Okay. Maureen, can I just mention that in your, um, summary of the college street sign you mentioned if you're going to write this out you mentioned that the green state sign that i hoped would come down you said it says town you said right. it's to the left and it's to yeah, the right I'm, yeah yep thank you for that clarification you're going to write it up to get it right um do you want me to make a motion yes please i just want to i just want to add one thing to maureen's description it's not all, we're not recommending only to eliminate redundant signage, but to coordinate the placement of signs for wayfinding and, and yeah. readability. Right. So I just want to make sure that that's in yeah, there. Yeah, good it? point. Yeah. Separate, but yeah. This could, benefit, yeah. this could really benefit the town if we could get rid of some of the... Indeed old wonky stuff <laughs> around. Okay, uh, Jan, did... Jan. Uh, Okay, so uh, I moved that mm, the Design Review Board supports the wayfinding system of Amherst College as presented tonight uh, with a few recommendations for con further consideration between the town and Amherst College on placement and content. Okay, thank you. Second. Yeah. Okay, Lindsay seconded. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Any discussion? Okay. Okay. All in favor? I will I'll take a roll call here. Erica? Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Jan? Yes. And Catherine? Aye. Okay, there you go. Anything else that we need to pass on to Amherst College or are everybody satisfied? Is that it? Look, looks great. I'm sure this was yeah. a lot of work. So it um, it's it's really clean and and well done. So congratulations. Yeah, I wish, it, I wish we had that quality with the, the Amherst Town signs. Also. Oh my too. Yeah, me too. Oh, oh the whole time I'm watching these, I'm thinking, man, oh man, did we miss the boat. But well, you get what you pay for. I'm sorry. I know. That's right. That's right. Uh, Have they left? No, yeah, they're here. Thank, uh, thank you to Sam, Andrew, uh, Seth. Yes. And, um, Tom. Tom. and Tom. Oh, sorry. And Tom Davies, of course. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, and, yep. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank, and so, thank you all. Yeah. It was, really, really was appreciate fun it. working with you. You were good sports. So. I, I think what's really um, great to see is that. Every time we meet with some with a group, the program gets better. Um, yeah. so I yeah. think that, that's right. really encouraging. Thank yes. you. 
Yes. Tom, yeah. remember my comment from last night. I mean, if you didn't write it down about if you're going to close quadrangle to through traffic to put a drop box for the library in the mm -hmm. conference lot, okay? Because all of us in the five colleges, if we live in Amherst, we'd much rather drop off books there than go back to our respective campus. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you're you. welcome. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Okay. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Maureen, do so, we have anything else? No, agenda. let me see if there's any member. No, there are no members of the public, so we don't okay. need to do the general public yeah. comment period. Okay. Uh, I um, have not uh, typed up any meeting minutes, uh, so I will hope to get get back to that. Um, okay. And for this memo, so the TSO will be uh, holding a meeting tomorrow night. So I'll be typing up this memo in preparation of that meeting okay. and I'll forward that along to you. Uh, pr prior, if, if anyone can um, has a moment to review it, um, and so that's okay. it. Um, do I hear a motion? Do I have we dinner? <laughs> I just, um, made I just your dinner. Okay. want to make a. Quick I heard comment. a motion. We adjourn. Oh, important. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be out of commission probably for the next few weeks, having a baby. So yeah. um, I already told Maureen um, that any meetings that come up. Um, just know that you're down one person in terms of having a form. Okay. Um, until probably <laughs> next month. You're not in the not mood September. To October. To Zoom. Maureen, I'm going to be a lot more limited on my dates that I can meet because I'm commuting to Boston and back, so there won't be as Ooh. many a week. Okay. So, you know, well, you have to pick carefully if you have a certain number of days from the time you get an application or something that we have to meet. We're going to need to plan really uh, okay. far ahead. Good. Good. Th thank you for letting me know yeah. that. Uh, I've I've informed uh, staff members of 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 sort of everyone's schedule coming up in September and beyond, and that we need to. I, I don't expect this board to sort of meet in a whim of oh, in the next forty hour forty eight hours, can we meet sure. and yeah. um and that we you know we'll come up with a a monthly schedule if if needed, um so we can all sort of coordinate together with. Um, having a more consistent schedule. Very good. All right. Well, so move. well, best of luck, Lindsay. We'll be thinking about you. We'll Thank miss you very you. much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the meeting has been adjourned. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Nobody's Thank you. You. Nobody seconded the motion, but I vote yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs>